Ari Hugerbrug, also known as Safari Ari, started in St. John's, Newfoundland on November 12, 2019. His mission? To bike the road less traveled. Today is just one pedal closer to the tip of Argentina. All right. Hey, guys, this is Brandon McCaskill. Welcome to the Safari Ari Roadshow. We have Ari Hugerbrug here with us, and uh, we're just going to catch up with them and see what's new. Ari, how's it going, sir? Actually, things are going extremely well. Extremely yeah. well. Uh, yeah, I've been in extremely high spirits for the last almost two weeks. Um, yeah, no, it's been really great. Um, I do apologize if there's any background noise. I'm at a hostel in Chetamo, Um and the windows I can't close and we're right off the street. So okay. thanks for that. Um, anyways, so yeah, so we last spoke, I'm just sort of going to refer to some notes also, because uh, that's what I kind of have to do because I'm old. Um, we last spoke <laughs> November 3rd in Cordoba. Mm -hmm. I left Cordoba November 4th and over the next 11 days, of my 163 days in Mexico, I biked 1,118 kilometers of my 6,020 kilometers in Mexico. Wow. So over 11 days, I actually biked virtually 20% of my entire Mexican route. Uh, wow. 11 days. Well, I was, um, was going to say, you look like you've got a lot more sun than the la last time I saw you. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I have. Yeah, no, the days have been very long on the bike. I actually set my alarm now. I started, I got in the habit of setting my alarm at 6 a.m. Yeah. Um, I have never set my alarm on this bike ride ever. Hmm. ever. I just wake up when I wake up. Yeah. I break camp. I bike till it gets dark. I set up camp and you know usually i play on my computer or whatever um until whenever and <clears throat> go to bed whenever and then wake up whenever but it actually gets dark here in this part of the world at 6 p.m hmm. which is probably not unusual for being in canada i'm guessing it's in around that time give or take now anyways yeah. but uh actually this part of the world gets dark at 6 p.m regardless of the time of year <clears throat> um and so uh, my plan was when I got to Belize, because I have lots of outdoor work to do and you want to take advantage of, you know, the cooler morning. Uh, my plan was in Belize to start setting my alarm at 6 a.m. Hmm. And I realized that uh, I need to start setting that, making that habit uh, happen now kind yeah. of deal. So I've been setting my alarm for 6 a.m. Um, I've actually been in a lot of hotels. That's been a little bit the frustrating part, I thought. Because I should backtrack. Part of the reason I had been just literally flying is partially just being in high spirits. Like basically since mm. we last spoke, kind of when I left that city, yeah, the landscape and the terrain like basically became just like Belize. Um, hmm. Just the tropical environment, the humidity, but it's just like the vegetation, like the trees, the, the foliage, uh, the various birds, species, uh, iguanas, uh, hmm. like just like in many, like for almost for basically two weeks, ever since I left Coroba, it's just basically been like I've been in Belize. Oh, cool. And yeah, so I've been, yeah, like I said, in very high spirits. Um, the other thing is the train, the terrain overall has been fairly flat. Um, hmm. I did have a couple days where it was kind of up, down, up, down, hilly, mm -hmm. but for the most part, fairly flat. And so with the fairly flat terrain, I'm also able to, uh, you know, get some good distances. And then, like I said, because I've been setting my alarm for 6 a.m., uh, I'm taking advantage. Like, usually I would get up at like 9, 9.30. Right. So that's an extra three hours average a day that I've been getting. Um, mm. Plus, because I have been in a hotel for good parts of this recent section, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm usually packed and ready to go before I go to bed, which means I could, you know, I, I set my alarm for six and I'm out the door literally at 6.30 a.m. biking. Yeah. So that has contributed to um, uh, some good distances. Um, so, yeah, no, it's been amazing. So, yeah, so basically I'm currently in Chetamal. 
um, which is basically the border city in Mexico with Belize. Right. So for all intent purposes, my Mexican route, my Mexican riding is done. Hmm. I have like 15 kilometers to the Belize border um, and I'm out of Mexico. Wow. And what um, was the date again that you had to be out your- uh, In Belize? around the first week of December, December oh, okay. 5th, 6th. So I am obviously ahead of schedule and I right. do have some time. And I am actually going to be in Chetamal here um, I hope not a week, but I guess a little bit less than a week um, mm. because I want to be 100% caught up on all computer work, mm. blogging, photo editing, um, because I'm not 100% sure what to anticipate um, as far as internet access mm. when I enter the lease. Um, right. So couple of things in that sense. Um, going into Belize, I actually, I'm hoping, I, I'm, I'm waiting for an update. I sent my property managers an email the other day, just trying to get a sense of what kind of the COVID paranoia is in Belize. Um, because Belize is in far more, well, in Mexico, I mean, other than museums and international retail chains or, or the major retail chains requiring masks, COVID is kind of a non-issue here in Mexico. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a percentage of the population that wears masks while they're driving, right. which I didn't go to that. <laughs> Let's not even go there, but not so there. there's that small percentage of people. And mm -hmm. then there's the brands and the kind of the, the commercial retailers that require masks. Other yeah. than that, it's a non-issue. Mm -hmm. There's, I've never had a single problem with anyone regarding COVID or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, these, I get a lot of the news through Facebook. Uh, Belize is a little bit of a different country that way right now. They have curfews uh, until like a few weeks ago, Sundays, the, the entire country would shut down. Um, mm -hmm. So I really actually want to, even though it's like, it's only like 200 kilometers, give or take to my house. I actually want to take that very, very, very slowly and maybe make some detours and try to maybe meet um, mm -hmm. uh, a fair amount of people. But if the level of paranoia is too extreme, then mm -hmm. I might find myself getting to my house fairly quickly, right. which I really is not the case. Um, that being said, also, regardless of whether I go fast or quick, um, I've had to do, I think I mentioned, like I, I've had a fair amount of hotels in the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, but, but I don't really, well, first <clears throat> Belize is a much more expensive country. So for all intent purposes, hotels is not an option. Um, secondly, because there'll no, they'll no longer be a language barrier, I'll just simply ask mm. people if I can camp in their yard or wherever, if, mm. if I, well, mind you, there's not nearly as many people in Belize as there is in Mexico. So mm. stealth camping will probably not be nearly as difficult. And like I said, even if I have a problem, like I won't hesitate to ask someone if I can camp in their yard. Right. Um, I'm, I haven't done that in Mexico simply because of the language barrier. <clears throat> phone and translate can I please camp in your yard but then of course they're going to have like 50 questions about my bike ride and yeah you know and that's it and then also if I if I stealth camp there's so many people in Mexico it would actually almost be impossible not to be found uh mm -hmm. stealth camping and yeah. I'm half expecting like they would actually disturb me in the night to try to tell me oh this is a dangerous place to camp mm -hmm. which it wouldn't be but they have a different mindset and mm -hmm. then, but then it's dark and I'm trying to converse with someone in the dark after I've been disturbed. Yeah. And so it's like, I just had like, so yeah, it's like, if I can't find a place to camp, it's dark. I just find a hotel in Mexico, but that's not going to be the case in Belize. I will hmm. endeavor to find a place to camp asking people uh, kind of deal. But um, so anyways, yeah. So, my hotel situation, my internet situation 
is going to be very different going into Belize. Yeah. And so I want to be 100% completely caught up on my work. I want all my blogs completely caught up. There's a, you know, I got to do a Mexican summary blog and all this kind of other stuff. And also, I mean, uh, because I'm so excited about getting into Belize, that's pretty much all that's been on my mind as I pedal. And I've got all these different ideas of some things I need to do when I arrive and some things I want to research, you know, via the internet, if this will work or that will work or whatever. So I actually want to do a fair amount of research of some things I've been thinking about done here uh, because uh, it's not so much I'm worried about lack of internet, but speed. I know my property mm. man, sometimes when they send me an email, they send me an email, he'll tell mm. me, I've been trying to send this email for three days, uh, mm. but the internet's slow. And it's like, if he's trying to send me an email for three days, I ain't doing a whole lot of web surfing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I kind of want to take advantage uh, being at a hostel, um, it's $14 Canadian a night, uh, with of course Wi-Fi included. I also want to get myself oriented with this city a little bit because if I end up staying in Belize, which is likely, I may end up coming back and forth to this particular city, hmm. you know, every month, every couple months, like Belize does not have Amazon, but I can get Amazon delivered here. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. But, so different retailers. I do want to sort of investigate this city out a little bit just as future mm -hmm. options of whatever if I need certain things that I can't get in Belize. Right. So, but yeah, no, things have actually been really good. Very high spirits. Can't wait to get into Belize um, and can't wait to get home. But like I said, if I'm going to do my best to, to, to go slowly. Um, if I get it, if I get an email that says, yeah, actually, everyone's really, really paranoid in Belize, hmm. then it's like, okay, well, then that might just speed up my process and yeah. it could be a matter of days before I actually get to my house on a deal. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Right on. Well, thank you, sir, for that update. And I'm sure uh, we'll be talking to you once you hit Belize. You think that'll yeah. be the next uh, time we talk? Um, prob yeah, I mean, yeah, I won't, yeah. It'll be, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, and I should, I should probably just, you know what? Technically, this is a huge backtrack. I did follow the, uh, I was able to reach the Gulf of Mexico. I basically just did a straight line uh, from Cordoba to Chetamal. Uh, I beelined it, which actually had me hit the coast. And so, yeah, I guess obviously by now on the video, you're showing the map and it'll show yeah. basically a straight line across. Um, but yeah, I hit the coast and that was really uh, quite beautiful. That was because the reason I, it popped in my head is because that was in a way kind of a bit of a milestone of of because it was last time I saw the ocean was on the Pacific side in the Baja. Mm -hmm. And that was like four months ago. So it basically took me four months to get from the Pacific Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico. That's cool. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, and it was actually, that was the best actually going along the Gulf of Mexico. There's a, a day, day and a half of that. And that was probably the, some of the best riding that I'd had the entire mm -hmm. trip to Mexico. I really, really, really enjoyed that. Wow. That's cool. So right on. Yeah. So now that we put that all the way at the end. Of this, <laughs> um, that's all right. We got forgiving we, fans. Yeah, I was going to say, good, good thing we don't get paid a lot or no, we don't get paid anything. <laughs> get paid our compliments. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Ari, thank you for uh, giving us an update. Uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you when you reach Belize and uh, we wish you safety, sir. All right. Later. All right. Take care. Bye, Bye. guys. Please subscribe, comment, share the video. Thank Bye you. for now.